Good morning and welcome to worship with the Congregation of the Presbyterian Church at Peace Chapel. We are so glad you can be here with us today, either in person or out in Zoom world and um, sharing with us in worship. Chris Farrow is still out sick and we will talk about that a little more at Joys and Concerns. Um, don't worry, he's, he's not dying, he's getting medicine, he's getting treated, all those things are happening, but he's going to be out for a bit. Um, he is with us, I believe, via Zoom. He said he was going to try to be here just to be in worship, and he was here earlier to um, help the rest of the tech crew get the tech working, so that was good. Um, so we welcome Debbie Lahr, who is at the piano, um, and her husband Ray, who is here keeping her company. So we are glad that both of them can be here with us today as well. We will be celebrating the Lord's Supper during worship, so if you're out in Zoom world, you will want to have a piece of bread or a cracker to, big enough to break and enough for however many folks are there at your Zoom screen to share, and some juice or wine or, if necessary, water so you've got something to dip in as you celebrate the supper online with us celebrating here in the chapel. 
Um, everything else you need for worship will show up on your screen, and the bulletin will keep scrolling through. We invite you, if you're out in Zoom World, to read aloud with us the lines that are in bold print and sing along with the songs, um, just so you can be taking just so you can be taking part with us and be with us in spirit, even when you can't in person. Uh, folks here in the chapel are reminded. I will invite you to stand for hymns, but for at least for most of them, uh, but. If you don't feel comfortable standing, just stand in your heart, and that will be just fine. If you're out in Zoom world, you won't be able to come up and bring your offering to the plate when um, offertory time comes, but we invite you to make use of the Vanco, V-A-N-C-O, mobile faith engagement app. And if you enter Vanco into your, um, into your web browser, or if you... Um, put it in your phone's app store you'll find the app it's a free app they'll get you set up and then you put in presbyterian church at peace chapel and it will help you to um, give electronically if you don't feel comfortable with electronic giving you can do the old school thing and write a check and put it in an envelope and put a stamp on it and send it to 1212 livingston avenue in north brunswick children out in zoom world are encouraged to have paper or pencil and pencil or crayons handy to draw pictures during the sermon. Um, and that should sort of take care of everything and get us through worship. So Debbie is going to play through our gathering song, and then we'll sing it a couple of times, maybe three. We'll sing it three times. And um, second time, I'll invite you all to stand. Come in gladness, come in sadness, seeking friendship, hope, and meaning. Welcome in the name of Christ. Welcome, 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 welcome in the name of Christ. Come in gladness, come in sadness, seeking friendship, hope, and meaning. Welcome in the name of Christ. Welcome, 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 welcome in the name of Christ. Come in gladness, come in sadness, seeking friendship, hope, and meaning. Welcome in the name of Christ. Let us worship God. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Blessed be God, my rock, who teaches me to fight fair and well. Blessed be God, my rock, the bedrock on which I stand, the castle in which I live, the high crag where I run for safety. Blessed be the people who receive God's love and care. Blessed be the people who have God for God. Debbie's going to play through the psalm and then we'll all sing. Yet will 
listen when I pray. Ages past have sung your praises. Now my generation sings of your glory, splendor, goodness, and to you its homage brings. All your works speak of your kingdom where you reign eternally. Yet from where your great compassion reaches out to comfort me, and your saints on earth acclaim you as your mercies they recall, knowing you will never leave them, for you made and love them all. God, you gave the hungry man on Beloved in Christ, our Lord Jesus has his arms open wide with grace for you. May our love be shared in Christ Jesus. Please be seated for prayer. And before we do the praying part, because we're going to finish the praying and the assurance of pardoning, you're all going to be ready to sing Danya say, except it's not there. So we're going to learn the new song. It's incredibly difficult. This will be an arduous learning experience, I promise you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the rock, the rock that lasts. Jesus is the rock that lasts. Just that much. Jesus is the rock, the rock that lasts. Jesus is the rock that lasts. Here's the rest. My soul has found a resting place. Jesus is the rock that lasts. My soul has found a resting place. Jesus is the rock that lasts. We'll string it all together. Jesus is the rock, the rock that lasts. Jesus is the rock that lasts. My soul has found a resting place. Jesus is the rock that lasts. Now, there are two things I want to say about this. It's a, I'm told it's a Ghanaian folk song. I can't find the original language for it. I have asked around if anybody knows where I might find the text in the original language please let me know and I will find it and maybe we can use that too. But that's why it's only in English for us is because I can't find the rest. Um, and the second thing is when we get, when we get there, Debbie's going to play through it. I'll give her a sign. She's going to play through it and then we'll all sing it a couple times. And then after sharing, joy, after sharing the peace of Christ, we'll sing it again. Okay. And so now let us confess our sins and leave our burdens at God's feet so that we may go forth free and forgiven, living out the promise of our baptism. Let us do all this beginning with the prayer that we find on our leaflets or in our leaflets and on our screens. Let us pray. God who loves us, who made us to be good and who shows us what is good, 
we confess that we often shy away from doing justice. Lord, have mercy. We confess that we have often neglected to love kindness. Christ, have mercy. We confess that we often forget to walk humbly with you. Lord, have mercy. As we rise to the light of a new day, rise new in our hearts, O God. As we greet one another again, call us to begin again our covenant journey. As we break the fast of the night, help us break the cycle of sin in our lives. Listen to these words that we may trust from the prophet Isaiah. Can a woman forget her nursing child? or show no compassion on the child of her womb. As a mother comforts her child, so will God comfort us. Believe this good news and live in peace. God has shown us what is good. And what does the Lord require? That we do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with God. is the rock, the rock that lasts. Jesus is the rock that lasts. My soul has found a resting place. Jesus is the rock that lasts. Jesus is the rock, the rock that lasts. Jesus is the rock that lasts. My soul has found a resting place. Jesus is the rock that lasts. <clears throat> and so we hear these words from the Apostle Paul. Work together, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Beloved in Christ, the peace of Christ be always with you and also with you. Let us greet one another with the hand of fellowship just a minute, we'll get there. Let us greet one another with a hand of fellowship and the peace of Christ. Peace. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Peace, Ellie. Will you help me with communion later? Thanks. Peace, Carol. Peace, Zach. Peace. Peace, Beatrice. Peace, Jonathan. Peace, Tom. We let them do this for a minute and then we'll I'm gonna ask you now to start playing so we can let them know it's time to um play just an intro. Jesus is the rock, the rock that lasts. Jesus is the rock that lasts. My soul has found a resting place. Jesus is the rock that lasts. Jesus is the rock, the rock that lasts. 
Jesus is the rock that lasts. My soul has found a resting place. Jesus is the rock that lasts. I wondered about that last bit, about putting in clapping on the first Sunday. I mean, you know, we're Presbyterians and all. And I'm sure that somewhere in Scotland, John Knox's bones have just shook. But that's okay. Get him awake a little. Again, I welcome everybody to worship. I am glad you're here, and we are going to visit with um, young children before Bible stories and sermons and all that good stuff. And yes, Ellie, you can stay right where you are. Thank you. You're welcome. No, not now. She's going to hang out. She's going to hang out right there. Later she'll come up. Later she'll do stuff. Okay. Have you ever thought, Ellie, have you ever been scared? Yeah. You've been scared? Have you ever, when you're scared, been kind of grumpy at people or mad at people who then went and asked you questions? Yeah, maybe even her. <laughs> yep, sometimes. That happens to everybody. When we get scared, sometimes we get mad easier. Sometimes we're just not polite when we're being scared. And the thing is that some people are scared a lot of the time. And in our Bible story today, we're going to have somebody who's scared, I think, a lot of the time. We know that he's scared in at least part of the story because of the things that he's afraid to do and then that he's made to do. And this fellow's name is Herod. And Herod, everybody called him the king, except he wasn't really the king. He was the ruler of, a, of what the Romans called a tetrarchy. And that means he's the ruler of a little region. It was like he's the mayor instead of being the king. And he acted like a king and he was in charge, and he, you know, he was in charge, and he could do stuff. But the real ruler was in Rome, and there were even rulers in between Herod and the real ruler who were probably above Herod. And so he always had to be worried about them. He had to be worried about the ruler in Rome. He had to be worried about whether he'd get to keep his job, and he had to worry about whether everything he was doing made him look like he was a king. And so he was, I think he was scared a lot of the time because he was certainly nasty a lot of the time. The other person who's going to be in our story is Jesus. Now, does Jesus ever get scared? Well, yeah, he does. Yeah, Jesus got scared, and we know Jesus got scared. But does Jesus get scared a lot? No. And it's because Jesus isn't trying to be in charge of everything. Jesus isn't trying to hang on to everything. In fact, Jesus is going to give away stuff. He's only going to have a little bit of stuff. He's going to have five loaves of bread and two broiled fish. And he's going to have 5,000 men there, plus women and children who are all sticking around for dinner. So there's probably more like 8,000 people there, maybe even 10. That's a lot of people, and five loaves of bread and two fish. But Jesus doesn't get scared. Jesus doesn't get worried. He says, have everybody sit down. And he's going to take the bread, and he's going to break it. Well, he's going to bless it first, and then he's going to break it. And then he's going to give it to them, and the fish too. And by the time they're done everybody's going to get fed and there are going to be 12 baskets of stuff left over because Jesus just trusts that God is going to take care of this. We don't know how God took care of it. What we know is that Jesus didn't get scared, didn't say, tell everybody to go away, which is what his disciples wanted, wanted him to do. He just trusts and trusts that there will be enough. So, I'd like you to be thinking about everybody who's doing this part. Think about, listen to the Bible story, and then think about the times when we're scared and the things that make us scared, especially trying to hang on to stuff and what it would be like to say we don't have to worry about that. 
We don't have to be scared. We can just let things go. Even our being scared, we can let go of. And then we can share. And think about what would happen in all of our lives if we did that that way. So that's what will happen in the Bible story. There's also going to be a little bit of stuff from the prophet Isaiah almost at the end of the sermon. But I'll let that be a surprise. Now, before we have Bible stories in church, we always say a prayer. And Ellie, at the end of the prayer, what do we always say? Ellie, what do we say at the end of the prayer? Amen. Got it. Okay, so you're going to say the amen with us. The grown-ups are going to help with the prayer. God, your word comes with powerful surprises. Open our minds to your word. God, your word comes needing nurture. Open our hearts to your word. God, your word comes to change our world. Open our lives to your word. Oh God, let your word come now. And we all say, amen. Oh, the other thing I have to say, Jonathan, when I get to reading Isaiah, watch out and be ready to change the camera angle because I'm going to move down there. Listen for a word from God in this story from the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. At about that to this time, Herod, the regional ruler, heard what was being said about Jesus. He said to his servants, this is John the Baptist. He's been raised from the dead. This is why these miraculous powers are at work through him. Now, Herod had arrested John, put him in chains, and sent him to prison to placate Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, whom he, by the way, had married and got rid of Philip. That's because John told Herod, it's against the law for you to marry her. Though, although Herod wanted to kill him, he feared the crowd because they thought John was a prophet. But during Herod's birthday celebrations, Herodias' daughter delighted him by dancing before his guests, so much so that he swore to give her anything she liked to ask. Prompted by her mother, she said, give me the head of John the Baptist here on a platter. Herod was aghast at this, but because he had sworn in front of his guests, he gave orders that she should be given what she had asked. Then he had John beheaded in prison. John's head was brought on a platter and given to the girl who brought it to her mother. Later, John's disciples got the body, gave it a reverent burial, and reported all this to Jesus. Now, when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard about it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore again, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. That evening, his disciples came and said to him, this is an isolated place and it's getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. Jesus said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. They all ate their fills. They gathered 12 baskets of leftovers. Those who ate numbered about 5,000 men plus women and children. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. It seems odd, maybe, for these two stories to be next to each other, but I assume 
that Matthew had a reason. And I think it might be that the reason might be so that we would see the responses of these two men right next to each other. Herod seems to be a nasty, cruel person. But it may be better, as I was telling the children, to think of him as a fearful person. It's obvious that he's afraid when his stepdaughter wants him to make good on his foolish promise. He's afraid of losing face in front of his guests. But he's also afraid of John, the baptizer, or else he'd have dispatched him already. When you think about it, Herod has a lot to be afraid about. Herod isn't even entirely his own name. It's a family name. And Herodias just means girl Herod. It's probably not her real name, but nobody called her by her real name. He acts like a king, but he just rules a tetrarchy, a region. The real power is in Rome. Herod's trying his best to hold on to what he can, playing out of his league, scared that he'll lose it. And like frightened people do, he lashes out and makes choices that he regrets later. Jesus isn't nasty. He isn't cruel. And a lot of this is because he isn't such a fearful person. That's not to say he was never afraid. He was fully human, so of course he was afraid. And if you go and look in the Gospels and find the story of what he does with the fig tree when he's having a really bad week, yeah, sometimes he was afraid. But he isn't afraid the way Herod is afraid. And not because he is a real king, while Herod pretends. Jesus isn't afraid because unlike Herod, he isn't trying to hang on to anything. Not his status, not his divinity, not his own peace and quiet when he goes off to be by himself and everybody follows him to make sure he can't. Not even the five loaves and two fish. Jesus, by letting go of everything, can have compassion on this crowd who intrudes on his grief. Imagine that you were trying to take a day off or some time away, especially because you were really upset about something, and 8,000 people show up at the place where you're supposed to be by yourself. Think of how you might react. But Jesus has compassion. And by compassion, the Greek tells us he felt love and care for them deep in his gut. That's what the Greek word means. Not just nice little hallmark compassion, but deep in your gut compassion. And there's our challenge. To respond to the world with love. Love from deep in our guts instead of fear. And that is often easier said than done. The world is full of people who are afraid, flat out running scared. Scared that they won't make the rent or the mortgage this month. Scared of what their blood test results might say. Scared of global warming. Scared that people will realize they are frauds, that all this time they've been faking it and they really aren't as good as people think they are at whatever their job is. Scared of old age. Scared of not being liked. You name it, there is a fear for it. And a lot of the fears are about things we can't control. And some people act out to cover for their fears. They act out with bravado. They act out with insults. They act out by tweeting nasty things about other people in the middle of the night. They act out with prejudices. They act out with conspiracy theories. They act out with belligerence. And sometimes they act out with violence. We know anybody like that? Maybe. But we can be different. We can respond instead out of love from deep in our guts. 
love for love's sake. We can do that by letting go of our fears and by being willing to let go of everything else. We can do that by remembering that when we let go of everything, when we have nothing, God always has more for us. Listen for a word from God in this portion of the book of the prophet Isaiah. All you who are thirsty, come to the water. Whoever has no money, come. Come anyway, buy and eat. Come, buy your drinks, buy wine and milk, buy without money. Everything's free. Why spend money for what isn't food and your earnings for what doesn't satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Listen and come to me. Listen and you will live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my steadfast, sure love for David. I set him up as a witness to the nations, made him prince and leader of nations, and now I'm doing it for you. You, you will summon nations you've never heard of, and nations who've never heard of you will come running to you because of me, your God, because the Holy One of Israel has honored you. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. We can always come back to God and be fed. We don't need to have anything. We can witness to God's love and grace beginning here at this table. We can let go and not be afraid and be a loving beacon to the world because God honors us. Or we can be frightened jerks. I think it's obvious how we'll be happier. Don't you? Let's pray. Write these words in our hearts, dear God, and help them to grow up in us the fruits of your spirit to the honor and praise of your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let us all please stand as we are able, and let us affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Christians, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Again, I welcome everybody to worship. Yes. Oh, yeah, now I can hear the sound too. Yeah, well, um, I'm not sure what's making the crackle, but the wire's tight. So I apologize for the crackle for everybody, including people who are going to hear that crackle still in the recording. Um, somebody explains to me how to celebrate sacraments while standing really still. I'll look into that, but... Um, you know, since we're not Zwinglians and we don't believe it's all just representation, I'm not going to do that. So I welcome everybody again to worship. Um, we are getting ready to share our joys and concerns before we share our offerings and then share in the Lord's Supper. 
Um, and, while, and when we do that, I will invite folks out in Zoom world to turn off their mutes. And I will invite, um, I wonder if this will help. Let's try that. Um, I will invite um, folks who are on their phones in Zoom world to press star six, and that will get you out of your mute. In the meantime, while we get ready for that, I will just uh, point out a few things in the announcements. After worship today, folks who are here in Peace Chapel will have a chance to sign up for mission coworkers whom we wish to support in prayer, and we've got cards about that, and we've got, Carol's got a bunch of stuff set up in the back of the sanctuary, and so we'll take care of that if you're out in Zoom world and want to pray for one of our mission coworkers. Um, look at the list that's been in the um, Saturday emails and pick one and um, send an email back to the church office and we'll get the information to Carol and Carol will get stuff to you for that and we'll get that all taken care of. I'm not hearing the same crackle so I have a feeling that it was the, this that was the problem and not this but we'll find out. Um, which meant that to stop the crackle meant I had to stop moving my mouth which would have made worship very very interesting we'd have become a Quaker meeting. Um, okay. Um, so we'll do that right after worship. Next Sunday, we're back here for worship again. Um, and of course, the Sunday after and the Sunday after that. And then the Sunday after that, which will be Labor Day weekend, we will have worship and our sermon will be a hymn sing. And for that, I am asking for folks to let me know your favorite hymns so that we can consider hymns that are asked for the most, um, hymns that really fit well with the theme. Those are going to be the ones that get included because we'll have eight or ten, maybe twelve things to sing in worship, but I won't be able to do everything. Um, because you all don't want to have worship that's three hours long on Labor Day weekend. I'm sure you don't really want to sing hymns quite that much Labor Day weekend, but we will do that. So please be sure to get those hymns to me, write them down, put them in an email and send them to me or send them to the office, write them on a piece of paper and hand them to me and do that before August 20th or by August 20th and then I will be able to put this together so that we'll have a hymn sing Labor Day weekend. We're also going to be looking for a couple of people to be the worship leaders slash narrators for this hymn sing that day. Um, the script will be all written out. All you'll have to do is read your parts, but we'll need a couple people to do that as well. So speak to me if you can be somebody who helps with that. Um, see the information in the bulletin and in the Saturday emails about um, Saturday, October 7th, which is Heritage Day in North Brunswick. And I know October seems like it's a million miles away when we're all sweltering through January and or July and August. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, but who knows what January will be like. But we're sweltering through July and August. So, um, but... It's going to come up quickly. We're going to need lots of helpers. We're going to need people who can take stuff out to, out to the park where this is and set it up. We'll need some folks who can help take things down at the end of the day and bring them back here. Um, we'll need folks who can just take turns being at the table there. So um, be thinking about that. And if you can help, um, be speaking to one of the session members or be ready when we're going to be asking people and saying, I need you to do this kinds of things, again, starting in September. We'll do a lot of that so we get all our places set up. Okay, I think those are the things I needed to announce. Um, I'll start off with Chris. Um, Chris is at home. He is resting. He got diagnosed with Lyme disease. That's what's bothering him. He has already started the um, antibiotic regimen for that, so... He'll be getting better. Um, he's obviously monitoring what's going on in worship and trying to fix, fix me from far away. And that's okay. I appreciate that, Chris. Um, but he'll be out for the next couple of weeks, especially because he was going to be on vacation anyway for the next couple of weeks. So we will, we will be getting ourselves through things as we need to. But keep Chris in your prayers as he continues to recover. Anybody else we need to be remembering, especially in our prayers today? Hang on. 
Jonathan's being Sam for the moment. Carol. Yes, I'd like to have prayers for the family of da Donna Alexander. Donna was a dear friend who um, my family vacationed with for 10 years down in Wildwood Crest, and she died a week ago of cancer. It's a deep loss to her and all of her friends. Okay. I'd also <clears throat> like to ask for prayers for one of our mission co-workers, Jim McGill. Jim serves us in Niger. And I caught this yesterday and sent the email out to uh, the session members. It said, mission co-worker evacuated from Niger on State Department recommendations. There was a coup in West Africa, and they are asking for citizens to withdraw. And so Jim is going to be on a plane and coming back to the USA. Uh, the article says that he has served in Niger for the past several years. So mm -hmm. I ask that we keep Jim in our prayers. So let's keep Jim in our prayers. Let's also keep all the people of Niger in our prayers at this difficult time. Beatrice. We received a thank you card from Jaden, and I've put it in the back, so if anybody wants to read it. Okay. Jaden sent us a thank you card for supporting her going to Camp Johnsonburg and um, what she did there this summer. So this is wonderful to see. Thank you, Jaden. Nat. Yeah, Thanksgiving. I thank God. August 1st, uh, four, five days ago, is my birthday. And, and prayers for my son, Mark Abrokwa. Uh, he came here about six years ago. Then he go back to Ghana to complete his education. He's now in uh, UK study his master's there. So I request prayers for Almighty God to help him to complete and achieve his aim. Mm -hmm. okay. Would you say his name again, Nat? His name? Mark. Mark. Okay, I wanted to make sure I heard it right. Uh, Rita. Uh, prayers for myself and Ellie and a couple of my friends and their kids. We are going on a five night a six day five night vacation in the Dominican Republic specifically at Punta Cana we're leaving on Wednesday and we'll be back the following Monday so prayers for our traveling mercies and protection whilst we are there okay so prayers for Rita and Ellie and their friends while they travel and of course for everybody who's traveling at this time of year anybody else How's Mimi doing? Any any word? Um, no new word. Okay. I, I did report last week she has bronchitis. Terrible. No, that's the new thing. She's oh. been in the hospital. And, okay. We just really need to keep them in prayers. And I'm afraid that the housing I was so hoping for, I don't think it's going to materialize. It looks like all the apartments that were available are being lived in. Uh, I delivered meals there Friday. And so we just really need to keep that family in prayer. And all families that are yeah. probably suffering just as Mimi and the grandchildren. Okay. For food and for housing. Yeah. So prayers for Mimi and her grandchildren and everybody worried about food and housing and things like that. But also, especially for Mimi as she um, recovers from her bronchitis. And while we think about people being in hospitals, let's also pray for um, the nurses at Robert Wood Johnson Hospital who are either, who have either, I think, just began striking the end of this week. They went on strike for the first time since 2006. Um, 
not that they don't want to be able to do their work, but they want to be able to do it safely and they want to be able to afford to pay their rent. So, Martha. Um, <clears throat> and the situation throughout all of Africa, while whenever there's an, a coup or an upset, everyone, everyone is at risk. Um, in particular, generally those, uh, the opposition is specifically hunting Christians. Um, the number of Christians who were persecuted and killed in Africa is staggering. I don't know that I could stand the way they stand, faced with what they're facing. Um, at the same time, Thanksgiving for, and I, I apologize, I can't remember the gentleman's name, but um, perhaps you're familiar with the Shroud of Turin. It is purported to be the shroud in which Jesus was wrapped after his crucifixion. It may be one of the most investigated archeological pieces um, in recent history. Um, a gentleman from Israel, um, a Jewish gentleman, led a team recently and has just released a report that he himself is convinced that yes, indeed, this must be the wrappings that were placed around Jesus at the time of after his crucifixion. He traces it. He um, looks back at the work that was done and explains where it was at fault in line with what was Jewish law at the time, what could be and couldn't be regarding the, the uh, shroud itself. Um, just, for instance, at that time, Jewish people would not use a piece of cloth made of two different fabrics. And the shroud happens to have a patch in it made of cotton. The remaining shroud is linen. And what was tested, um, what is it called when they do the radiation testing? Carbon, carbon, carbon testing on it. They tested the cotton which was a patch, not the original linen. So it's a fascinating report. I'm sure if you Google it online, it's, um, if you look for it online, you can find it. But how wonderful that this gentleman has come from this and to know that perhaps we really do have an answer and uh, just further supports um, the story of Jesus' life. And um, yeah, just as far as fear is concerned, yeah. <laughs> we know who wins in the end. It just may be a difficult road getting there. <laughs> it's kind of like truth. If you look for the truth, truth will set us free, but boy, it could really kick us in the pants on the way there. So thank you very much for those who look for truth and um, try to overcome fear. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Martha. Tom? Yeah, I, I have two prayers. One, uh, uh, prayers for continued healing for all of our church members uh, that uh, need it. Uh, uh, Lawrence Bassey's fa and, and Lawrence's family. Um, let's keep them all in our prayers. And uh, also, uh, prayers for our uh, our fellow uh, uh, Christians in uh, in Haiti and uh, for all the citizens of Haiti they've had continued uprest there and uh, uh, last week I guess it's been a week ago a a, a nurse who uh, uh, worked uh, there in a clinic uh, was kidnapped and her daughter and this strikes me and I'm sure many people here uh, uh, close to home because uh, Katie Wolf, a, uh, a, uh, a person who grew up in this area, came. Uh, she attended the Kingston Church, and uh, she's devoted her life to run a clinic in in Haiti, trying to help 
uh, uh, people there, and it was somebody in a very similar situation who was kidnapped, and and uh, and uh, so just pray for for peace there and for guidance and God's God's protection for all those who are who are doing good work there in Haiti. Okay, thank you, Tom. So prayers for Bassie and Lawrence and Cornelia, for everybody else in the current congregation who needs healing for the people of Haiti. Let's keep them all in prayer. Anybody else? Thanksgiving for our new sign. Oh, yes. Yes, Thanksgiving's. <laughs> the, new, the new sign is out there. And if you drive in from work is done, I invite you all to drive in from the west on Livingston Avenue and know why we still need to do something with all the shrubbery in the front yard. You will see it very quickly. Okay. Well, I'm sure you did not take down as much as needs to come down. You don't look that sweaty. Um, okay. Wow, this is true. We're gonna, but you're gonna need more than you're gonna need. Somebody's gonna need to come with chainsaws and stuff to yank the roots out and fun things. So, still stuff to be done, but yes, some progress. And prayers of Thanksgiving for all. Yes, yes. Thanksgivings for everybody who made that happen, especially for Lawrence, keeping after everybody. A lot of things to be thinking about in our prayers. Hear these words from the letter to the Hebrews. Do good and share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. And so let us now with gladness present our tithes and our offerings from our life and from our labor unto our Lord.
joy, we praise you, gracious God, for you created heaven and earth, made us in your image, and kept covenant with us, even when we fell into sin. We give you thanks for Jesus Christ, our Lord, who by his life, death, and resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we join our voices with all the saints and angels and the whole creation to proclaim the glory of your name. Sacrifice offered once on the cross by our Lord Jesus Christ for the sin of the whole world. Gathered around your table by your love, we pray for your world and for all the people in it, especially for those in places of conflict or danger this day, for the people of Niger, the people of Haiti, the people of Ukraine and the soldiers of Russia, for refugees in so many places. Refugees from war, refugees from violence, refugees from natural disaster. We pray for those women and men who lay down their lives, brothers and sisters and neighbors, wherever they might be. And we pray for those who are called to lead us, for our president and representatives, our governor and legislators of our nation, our state, our cities and towns, and those who administer nations and states and cities and towns all around this world, that whether they profess your name or not, they might lead us into your truth, your freedom, your peace. Gathered around your table by your love, we pray for those in need of nurture, for Rita and Ellie and their friends who are going to be traveling, for everyone who is far from home and loved ones this day, for Jaden as she continues to grow in her faith and in who it is you are calling her to be, for those working at the at the Camp Johnsonburg who have supported Jaden and so many other young people and continue to do so. For Chris, for Jim McGill, for Mark, for Mimi as she, re as she works to recover from bronchitis and as she needs a home for her grandchildren with her, for Bassie and Lawrence and Cornelia caring for her, for continued healing for so many in our congregation, for Mark in his work, for Nat as we celebrate another year of having him among us, and for those who mourn, especially the, family, the Alexander family, for all those whose names we remember in our hearts and those whose names we don't know yet. Gathered around your table by your love, we pray for your church, for this congregation gathered here, for our sisters and brothers in and around North and New Brunswick, for the churches of the Presbytery of the Coastlands and the Presbyterian Church USA, her colleges, seminaries, missions, and ministries. 
for everyone who proclaims your good news wherever they might be. Gathered around your table by your love, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died and Christ is risen. Jesus Christ will come again. In the joy of his resurrection and in expectation of his coming again, we offer ourselves to you as holy and living sacrifices. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, we pray, so that this bread and cup may be for us the communion of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. May we and all your saints be united with Christ and remain faithful in hope and love. Gather your whole church, O Lord, into the glory of your holy reign. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. <coughs> Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you, congregation, to come and gather around the, gather around the table. Um, if you ha are going to have trouble standing for the whole time, come and sit in one of the seats in the front, and we will make the circle gather around you. For those who are wondering, the um, microphone has apparently decided it does not want to finish worship today, the, the lavalier mic. So um, this is all going to get really interesting now, that whole bit about trying to um, celebrate the sacraments without moving. So Ellie, I've got a special job for you. Give me your hand. Hold this tightly. Keep it right there. Our Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his friends and he said, take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And he gave it to them and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The bread which we break is the communion of the body of Christ and the cup of blessing which we bless is the communion of the blood of Christ. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We will share as we always do by intinction. So I'm going to come around and give everyone a piece of bread. Ellie's going to be right behind me with the cup. And when she comes to you, dip your bread in the cup and then immediately partake.
please return to your seats for prayer. And let us pray. Gracious God, how can we thank you for such a gift? For you have met us, fed us, drawn us to you, and bound us to one another. Now send us out to share your love and proclaim our hope until Christ comes again. Amen. Debbie is going to play through the hymn, and then we will sing it once in, in um, Swazi which is the Siso Hambanaye, once in English, and then the third time, pick the language you'd like to sing. And what happens, happens. chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You are God's own people in order that together we may proclaim the mighty acts of the one who calls us out of darkness and into God's marvelous light. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us all this day and always. And may all God's people say together, Amen.